Hi, I'm Pavel. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate financial metric called earnings per share or EPS with the data from Edgar API using Pandas. It is not a financial advice. We will calculate basic EPS. I use it when I need insights on profitability trends and benchmarks against competitors. A couple of notes on EPS in general. As you can see from the formula inputs, liabilities are not considered at all. So using EPS alone might not be optimal for your use case. If the company buys back stock, decreasing the denominator, you can observe higher EPS without an increase in earnings. Before we starting to calculate the EPS, I would like to point out that there are commercial APIs and uh, free applications that can provide you with EPS values. You don't have to calculate it from the raw data. The link to the code is in the description. Get Company Facts retrieves JSON from Edgar API. You have to pass your email, you can type it here, and the central index key of the company. In this example, we will be using Alphabet to calculate the EPS. You can inspect the dictionary returned by the function. Get facts retrieves individual fact from the dictionary and converts it to the data frame with the values and end period as a pandas daytime. Alphabet does not have preferred dividends. The calculation will look like this. We are retrieving net income loss fact and common stock shares outstanding. Let's display shares outstanding data frame. It has only values and the end period. In contrast with income where we have start and end period. Let's compare sizes of the data frames. As you can see, they are not matching because we have multiple observations in a single filing for different financial periods. For example, in Q1, we have multiple values for the end of the previous year and the current value of the shares outstanding, as well as values from the 8K reports. To filter those rows, we are calling filter facts where we query the data frame for values only in the financial year of the filing and we are interested only in the quarterly and yearly reports. Let's run the cell. We can see that uh, there are less rows in the data frame Filter facts also accepts a session number. So if you're interested only in a specific filing, you can filter it. Let's take a look at the income rows. For a single filing, we have multiple periods. For calculation, we would uh, like to have uh, one value for the end of the period. For example, in case of 
Q3, we would like to keep only Q3 values. For that, we will perform a left merge on the periods. In the get periods, we are creating start and the end date of the quarters. And in the case of the last quarter, we are modifying start date to be a start of the year. So in case of the last quarter, we have a full year. Next, we would like to calculate quarterly values. Because if you look into the income data frame, for the yearly report, we have a yearly value. In order to get a value for the quarter only, we have to subtract three previous values. We are doing that in this function. We are getting the periods that we are interested in and perform a merge on the end and the start dates. It gives us single value for the period. Then we calculate the rolling sum of the three previous quarters and we shift it by one to perform a calculation. Create a net income loss with the original value and subtract the sum for the yearly reports. And we have those results. The only difference is that now for the yearly reports we have a quarterly value. Now let's compare sizes of the data frames. They are matching. Let's display the values that we have in our data frames. Then we create shares outstanding with uh, original value that we have. Uh, in the shares data frame and we perform a merge of income and shares on the end of the period. This gives us all the values in a single row. Now the EPS data frame looks like this. We have quarterly income loss and shares outstanding and we are ready to perform a calculation those are the results that we get. We see a sudden drop in EPS last year. This is happening because Alphabet had a 20 for 1 stock split. You can see it in the reports. They are mentioning it in the notes. The simplest solution would be to just divide EPS by 20 and all the values are in the same boundaries. Let's plot the EPS that we calculated. I would like to point out that uh, you can retrieve the stock splits from the facts API as well. For example, for Google, we have those values. Let's uh, filter them to have a one value per split. And you can see that uh, there was a two for one stock split in the 2014 and another stock split last year. In the production application, you might want to maintain the cumulative multiple. It will simplify a lot of computations with the stock splits. You can plot different periods. For example, let's plot EPS for the last three years. You can see how it is rising. Sometimes companies publish EPS in their reports. Let's take a look at their report. 
in the nodes they have the same value for the EPS. Thank you for watching.